Welcome to my second video about metaprogramming in Lean. In the first video, we talked about what Lean is actually doing when you write a tactic proof. Um, where we ended, metaprograms were written in Lean, they produce Lean expressions, and we had a few questions. First of all, how do these metaprograms discuss Lean syntax if they're written in Lean themselves? And second, how do we actually evaluate these metaprograms? So in this video, I'm going to focus on the second question. We'll talk about virtual machine evaluation of Lean expressions, and we'll also talk about a couple different uses of the term meta um, that can be a little confusing. And in the following video, we'll look at the actual syntax of Lean expressions. In my last video, I said something about considering Lean as a programming language. And I made some vague gestures towards evaluation, or reduction. Um, I want to expand on that a bit. So suppose that I define something in Lean with the type nat, with no variables, no extra axioms. Say so something like def n nat is going to be uh, 3 times 2. This is just some Lean expression. It's an application of some function called mul to a couple numerals, three and two, well, those get elaborated into something more complicated. The details aren't so important. It's some Lean expression. But the canonical form of a natural number is a sequence of applications of the successor function um, ending in zero at some point. So I should be able to reduce my definition n to that canonical form. And we see if I type reduce n, this is actually an application of hopefully six successors, to zero. Um, this is the canonical form of a natural number. And it's not only natural numbers, it's not even only data that has canonical forms. We can also reduce proofs. The details here are slightly more complicated, but let's try to show that 2 is less than or equal to 10 uh, using the decidability of the less than relation on nat. Well, the canonical form of a proof like that is a bunch of steps of nat dot less than or equal, eventually applied to nat dot less than or equal dot refl. So I can reduce proofs in the same way that I can reduce data. This kind of reduction to this canonical form is soundness critical. Lean's trusted kernel knows how to do it, and if it messes up this reduction at some point, then you can probably turn that mistake into a proof of false somehow. So the reduction is optimized for simplicity and reliability. It's not optimized for speed or for convenience. It doesn't have any notion of fast arithmetic, of string processing, of anything like that. Um, and in fact, it's, it's pretty rare that Lean will fully reduce something like this in the kernel. More often, it uses this kind of reduction to see if two values reduce to the same value. It tries to find a common reduct. Um, so there's another layer of computation to this. Sometimes we don't care about this trust. Sometimes we'd like to evaluate something fully and quickly. And to do this, we can use Lean's virtual machine. VM computation is faster. It's untrusted, and I should really emphasize the untrusted part here. No matter how many bugs there are in Lean's virtual machine, these bugs will never let us prove false. Maybe they'll stop us from being able to prove something true in the way that we're trying to, but they'll never cause a soundness bug. Um, and to enable this faster computation in the VM, certain Lean definitions get overridden so that they compute faster. For instance, if, if I use reduce to evaluate 3 times 2, Lean expands these definitions. It basically does unary multiplication um, because this is how the multiplication operator on natural numbers was defined in Lean. In the virtual machine, we can do something a little smarter. We can represent the numbers 3 and 2 as actual uh, machine integers. If they're big enough, we can use GMP integers. Um, and the VM can do efficient arithmetic on them. 
There's another important difference here. VM evaluation can completely ignore proofs. The notion of a value in the VM is a little different. We have a data-centric notion of value um, rather than just a canonical expression. Um, so the VM can ignore proof terms completely. You'll never have to reduce a proof term because it, does, it doesn't have the same sense of a value. Um, I can show you one interesting example where this comes up. If I try to reduce the character A, Lean will get very unhappy, my CPU will uh, spin up, and eventually I'll run out of memory. This is because of the definition of a character. There's actually a proof of an inequality that's part of the data in the character A. And Lean tries to reduce this proof of some very large inequality. It's one large number is less than another. And reducing this proof takes a very, very long time. Now, if I type eval A, then Lean instantly tells me this is just the character A, because the virtual machine understands characters and understands strings um, in a way that's different than the, uh, the actual way that they're defined in Lean. Similarly, I can eval very large arithmetic. I don't know, just type in some random numbers. Lean is happy to tell me instantly that that is some other very large number. So the moral here is that kernel reduction is reliable. It's used for checking. VM evaluation is fast. It's used for computation. So here's an observation. If all we care about is computation, we can ignore a restriction that Lean usually puts on us, namely that every computation we do must terminate. In general, we can't do unbounded recursion in Lean because it's unsound. Um, you could prove false by just applying your proof of false. Um, so we have to prove that all of our functions terminate. For instance, I might try to write something like this. The function, I copy and pasted that wrong. So if I try to define a function like this that recurses on itself um, in a non-structural way, Lean rightfully complains that my recursion is not well-founded. At least I haven't justified it as being well-founded. Um, but maybe I don't care about proving anything about f. I just want to evaluate it. If I'm only evaluating, well, what's the harm in having something that doesn't terminate? My evaluation keeps going and going, and eventually I stop it. There's nothing so wrong with that. So Lean gives us the meta keyword, which allows us to write this definition of f. The meta keyword essentially tells Lean to treat a definition as untrusted for computational purposes only. And the name meta is a little confusing. We talked about meta programs in the last video, and in principle, there's no connection between this meta, pro this meta keyword and a meta program. We'll see in practice, there actually kind of is a connection. Um, really, all the meta keyword does for us here is set, disables the termination checker so that a function like this, which doesn't terminate on zero, well, that will just evaluate forever. Eventually, I'll have to stop it. But for any other value, it's happy to tell us that the function evaluates to 1. In fact, I can even check on all numbers from 1 to 1,000. We very quickly evaluate our function to 1. So metalene is like an extension of the core lean language. By metalene, I mean lean using this meta keyword. The meta keyword is sticky in that any declaration I write that depends on a meta declaration has to be meta itself. And it's trivial to prove the meta theorem false. So we're not really interested in meta theorems or meta proofs. So we're really only interested in meta definitions that we use for computation. Technically, it's a flag that says this doesn't need to terminate. 
but in practice, it's more like a flag that means for computation only. So why should we care about this meta flag if we're interested in writing tactics? Well, for one, tactics don't have to terminate. We'd like to be able to write metaprograms in the original sense of metaprogram that do unbounded proof search. Or at least we don't want to worry about proving their termination. We're also not going to prove anything about our tactics. We're going to execute them to create proofs, but we're not going to verify them themselves. And the same goes for when we're talking about lean expressions. We don't ex intend to study lean syntax um, within lean. We just want to manipulate it. I should note that you know, some people may be, interesting in, may be interested in studying lean syntax from within lean, um, which is a perfectly reasonable thing to do. You just need a different setup to do that. Um, so our tactics, our metaprograms, are meta in two different senses. We're going to write lean metaprograms in meta-lean. So remember how nat was overridden during VM computation? We said we replaced natural numbers with uh, machine integers or GMP integers. We're going to do the same thing for internal lean data structures. So to write a function that manipulates expressions, we're going to define a lean type expert, you know, define some basic operations about expert, but when I evaluate these operations in the virtual machine, it's going to replace the lean definition of an expression with the actual underlying data type, expert. And it replaces the, some of the operations I've defined on expert in lean with C++ implementations on this core data type. So what are the relevant lean types here? This is our topic for the next video.